Big Hits WBTC with James Taylor. And that brings us to 8.30. It is time for the 8.30 High Beam, which on Tuesday, of course, means we're going to talk with the doc. And it's being brought to you by Mako's Pharmacy at 240 East 3rd Street in downtown New Yorkville. Mako's Pharmacy is your local pharmacy with a caring and knowledgeable staff, which is focused on your health and wellness. And our doctor is Dr. Timothy McKnight, who is sitting by with us this morning. Good morning, doctor. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing great. So we come in this morning and, uh, you know, I've been talking a little bit about, uh, you know, things that uh, we, we seem to talk about things that can sneak up on you a lot. I yeah. guess maybe that's it's more of a surprise. Like, how did how did this happen to me? And uh, gluten allergies and food allergies are something that that I've become more aware of lately, and I don't know, and I ask you, is it more publicized, or is it just happening more, and and I'm not sure if there's a good answer to that. Well, I think it's probably a little bit of both. Uh, you know, once we hear about a condition and we feel like we have symptoms that match that condition, we're asking somebody, or we're looking, at, uh, looking it up on the Internet, and I think the public is more aware of these things, and the, the information is so freely accessible that the questions arise, and... Um, I, th I think people have heard about celiac disease and gluten intolerance, and uh, a, a lot of people have thought maybe they've got it. But uh, celiac disease, the true disease, only is prevalent in about 1% to 2% of the population. But a lot of those people, it's, it goes undetected because they're, they're unaware of the situation or conditions, and they don't seek out medical attention. So, so let's back up a little bit. Where, what is gluten? Where does that come from, and how does that lead to celiac? Well, gluten is a, uh, it's a, it's a set of proteins that is in wheat products and um, the, those proteins are pretty interesting when you're kneading bread the reason you need the bread is you're as you're allowing the gluten and the other gluten-like proteins to cross-link and that's what makes the bread real stretchy and it's what allows it to hold its structure when it raises with the yeast um, so if you eat a bagel or pizza really a really chewy type of a of a, uh, a carbohydrate that's got a lot of gluten activated in it on the other hand if you're making say pie crust and you put shortening and the shortening prevents those cross links from happening. And if you don't need that crust very much, anybody that works in a kitchen knows that you're not supposed to spend too much time kneading um, pie crust. Then it's really flaky and it falls apart easily. Mm -hmm. So when you activate the gluten, it really makes that that uh, bread or or pizza really um, really chewy. But the problem is is that this these gluten molecules for some people. Um, are uh, th there's a reaction to the, uh, that the body causes an, an immu immune response, an allergic reaction, because it says, "Oh, I, uh, I don't like this. This doesn't look like it's something that belongs here." So you get an immune response, and every molecule has its own signature protein on it. And I, before we came on the air, I was talking about I, before I, it was I was walking in the building, I was sneezing. Well, it's <laughs> ragweed season, and I'm thinking the same thought. I'm, I'm breathing in these these pollens that have a protein on them, and it's a signature protein, a unique protein on that particular pollen in ragweed that my body doesn't like, so I get this inflammatory response. The body kind of goes crazy over it. It's the same thing with people that have food allergies or, or celiac disease or celiac gluten insensitivity. The body sees this, and to a different degree, well, you get a reaction to it. And you may or may not put those pieces together, but there's all kinds of symptoms that go with that. Well, and the celiac disease, I mean, uh, it it may be at first a little hard to figure out what it is, but that can really lead to, down the road to some uh, serious things, can it? Absolutely, because uh, what happens is those proteins in the gut and the intestinal tract cause the intestinal tract, the cells that hold the intestines together, to break down. It destroys the villi. The villi in the intestines are like little fingers, uh, almost like a, if you could magnify your intestinal tract, it would look like a shag carpet with these little fibers, these little fingers that are kind of waving back and forth, and they're, they're kind of moving around and they're sucking the food particles into them. And when you have gluten insensitivity or, or celiac disease, you destroy those fingers. So the, the lining of the intestinal tract almost becomes naked. And um, that causes malabsorption problems. You can't break down the foods because that's where a lot of the enzymes are found. And you don't absorb the foods well. So that's one of the dangers of undetected celiac disease is malabsorption problems and nutritional deficiencies. And so you're not 
gaining the vitamins and things right, that you need, abs- right? You're not absorbing or breaking down the food appropriately, so you end up having diarrhea frequently, and you feel bloated because those food particles that remain in the gut, the bacteria in your gut, will feed on them and create a lot of gas, so that causes the, the bloating and the explosive diarrhea. And then you tend to have um, aches and pains and headaches because some of those proteins that do leak through the intestinal tract and get into your blood, your body says, I don't know what this thing is. We have to get rid of it so there's this inflammatory response, and then you get all these other conditions. And you were telling me, and you know, I'm well-versed in medical terms, uh, you were telling me that uh, there's a, a condition that uh, can occur called leaky gut, which yeah. I was able to pick up on yeah, right away. that's the technical term, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exactly what happens. And um, whether it's gluten, a protein that the body doesn't recognize or doesn't like, or it's pesticides, or it's the overuse of antibiotics or acid blockers, those, all these substances can cause the the uh, cells in the intestinal tract to start to leak. And you you have to envision your intestinal lining is almost like a brick wall. And in between the the wall, of course, is this mortar, the cement. And over time, these these foods that your body doesn't like will break down that mortar. And now you have cracks in the wall, and then proteins leak through. And that's leaky gut. We can actually measure that cement when it breaks down in the blood. It's called zonulin. And if you have a lot of that, in, in your blood, then we know you've got a leaky gut to, to some degree, and we know we have to fix that. And the way we fix it is we, uh, we can, the body can heal itself if you stop offending it, if you stop doing the things that it doesn't like. So when people have, whether it's gluten insensitivity or they've got celiac disease or any intestinal issue, we'll put people on an elimination diet and we'll say, let's give you a really narrow um, list of foods to eat that don't typically cause problems. And let's follow this real strictly for three weeks. And then one week at a time, we'll add back chocolate or we'll add back bread or we'll add back uh, nuts and we'll see how you do with that and uh, usually if you're really if you're really good with that approach you'll 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 realize that you know when I eat this I have a problem mm-hmm. so I have to either avoid it or limit the intake of that particular food so restricting the diet is much better or or uh, is there even any drug or thing that you prescribe to try to get over the illness you know the the drugs are designed for the downstream symptoms but the healing occurs by allowing the gut to heal itself yeah. and so that's why a lot of people when they eat really clean um, and they go to a vegetarian diet or they get out all the junk food and the processed foods they start feeling better and their skin will even clear up the their bloating and their diarrhea and the constipation will improve the acid reflux goes away and a lot of people don't they 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 want to hear that they like knowing that that can happen but they don't want to pay the price to be real strict with their diet so they'd rather take a pill for their heartburn or they rather take something to block the diarrhea but to fix the problem it it takes a little bit of discipline but boy you feel so much better and right. and people that do this like i said their skin clears up their headaches go away their energy level goes up their joints don't hurt anymore all these things happen with a healthy diet but that's the challenge we all have because those foods are found in the produce aisle of the grocery store. Yeah, we should have some salad, but then we're having cereal for breakfast and we're having a bagel for lunch, you know, and we're having pizza for dinner. And we're putting all these things back in that are really offensive to the intestinal tract and, and it makes us struggle. Yeah, I was just going to ask you about with some of the signs, but I, you, you pretty well went through those there. Yeah. Any other outward sign? I mean, your skin color, can that... Can you get pale or uh, not so much pale, but any any type of a rash, if somebody has a rash and we can't identify what that is, that's not poison ivy. That's not that's that's not scabies and that's not eczema. Well, actually, eczema it, to me is a sign of an intestinal problem. And the reason I say that is because if you if you take a string and you you uh, start it on your finger and run it up your arm and you put that string in your mouth and you push it down as far as it'll go, where is it going to end up? It's going to come out your rectum. Mm-hmm. So. So the idea is that your skin is that lines the outside of your body is the same type of tissue that lines your intestinal tract. So if you have something abnormal on your skin, you probably also have it in your intestinal tract, and that's probably a sign that there's a dysfunction there because the skin usually uh, can take care of itself and repair itself. But if the intestinal lining is injured, uh, like with leaky gut, then you, you 
you often will see these weird rashes and you're like, well, I don't know what that is. Let's try this. Let's try this. And what we use is anti-inflammatories. We give you steroids. That clears it up temporarily. Great. But that tells us there's an inflammatory problem and it probably originates in the gut. So that's where we need to place our focus. And it's just really cool that with the right type of foods, nine times out of ten, if we're if we're disciplined enough to carry this out for a month or longer, we can start to see those changes. And then all of a sudden that that appeal for those fast foods or the foods that those that we know are taboo that we love, it it's not as strong as the sensation of boy, when I avoid these foods I have more energy, I sleep better, I feel better. I'm not going to have pizza tonight. As much as I'd love to have it, I'm not going to have it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good incentive. Yeah, it should be. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, that that urge is just there. And <laughs> you're with a cra- you're with your friends after yeah. a volleyball game, right? And let's celebrate. And well, I'm this I ate good today. This isn't going to hurt me. It probably won't. But you know, you string a few days of those type of foods together, and you may see some problems. Right. Well, I'll have to watch myself then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> me too. Hey, hey, thanks for coming in. You're I welcome. enjoy. I always enjoy it. And. Uh, like I said, when you were walking in, you didn't hear me. I said, I always feel better when you leave, which sounds terrible, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave as quick as I can then. <laughs> Thanks a lot. This is Dr. Welcome. Timothy McKnight here on this morning's uh, 830 High Beam as we, of course, talk with the doc. And it's being brought to you, as always, by Mako's Pharmacy. Mako's offers their customers and community free assistance with comparing and selecting a plan based on your specific prescription needs. Call Mako's Pharmacy at 740-922-5400.